Brisbane agribusiness lawyer Trent Thorne came to prominence earlier this year for acting on behalf of northern beef producers who are considering taking a class action against the federal government's decision last year to suspend live exports. I caught up with Trent here at uh, Beefex where he responded to RSPCA CEO Heather Neal's position that her organisation remains opposed to live exports. It's an unusual position for them to take given that we're trying to dictate public policy to an overseas country and I think when you look at these particular issues you're looking at what is largely a white um, middle class socio-economic issue in Australia is, is, is so enlightened that we've gotten to the point where we're now trying to tell other people who are trying to work their way into um, you know, wanting a better lifestyle and, and eating more protein how to live their lives. I, I just, that really sort of, I have a, a fundamental problem with, with people doing that. Um, it's for them to make that journey themselves and maybe in 20 or 30 years time they can figure that out, that out for themselves. If you look at just for instance the boats, they regularly talk about the boats being cruel, you know, they have to report to Parliament every six months as to, you know, the, the number of fatalities on the boats. Um, over the last few years, the fatalities on the boats, when you look at about two years or so ago, there was a million cattle exported for the year, and there was only about a thousand deaths. You're talking about 0.1 of a percent. You know, it's, and, and cattle die. The reality is cattle died. It's not because they were you know, treated badly on the ships. It's like you know, human beings, they can just die. So when you're talking about 0.1 of a percent dying on these vessels, it's, it's insignificant. And the, and the other thing is, the reality of this is, you know, exporters are trying to make a profit. Why would they put these animals onto um, a ship where the conditions are so bad that they're going to suffer adverse animal welfare out? There's certain parts of the industry that are obviously um, have been able to pick themselves up and dust themselves off, but there's large parts, in particular of Kimberley and the northern parts of Queensland, who are hurting very badly. Some of them still haven't sold any cattle since the ban because you know they're the last ones in the chain to sell, and because of the, the ratcheting back of the permits in Indonesia, they may not sell cattle for another few more years. So. These guys are in real, real financial strife, and, and you know the real mortgage pain. Um, and, and the banks are, you know, obviously looking at this very closely. Like I was, I was speaking to it, um, an ag advocacy group in the northern parts of Queensland, and they're suggesting that about 35 percent of the property owners up there are about three months away from foreclosure. There, there's been a recognition over the last year the RSPCA were probably aligned a little bit too close to AA, and, and they've pulled back a little bit. Although they are still advocating this this ban on live export. Yeah. And the other issue, I, I may add, about and the fundamental problem I have with their, their criticism is that you need countries like Australia acting as an agent of change in these countries. If Australia is not there, you're going to have the Brazilians, the Argentinians, the Indians moving in, and all they're going to be looking at is the bottom line, and animal welfare concerns will, will fall away. So you need Australia in there to actually keep an eye on and improve these conditions in these countries. You know, if, if they ban live export, I assume it's just going to be out of sight, out of mind for most of these people. Like it, it'll be someone else's problem. And, that, and the reality is, if we're there, we can make a difference.